All right, y'all, I'm back here with the next edition of my metal CD collection. We are in the thrash section here, and it is A through D today. So we're going to cut it into it. I don't want to make this too long. I don't feel like this warrants a 25-minute video. Um, and we are listening to some Cannibal in the background. I've been on a Cannibal Corpse kick this past week for whatever reason. It just kind of hit me really hard on Sunday for whatever uh, and, you know, I've been enjoying it. I've been mostly on the, the Corpse Grinder era, which is odd, because usually when I listen to Cannibal, it's pretty much always the Chris Barnes era with the occasional deviation. But I really love this, love this stuff. So let's get down to business. It's early in the morning, not drinking any beer. Uh, and the first one we're going to open with is Alice in Hell by Annihilator. Obviously a Canadian classic thrash record that I'm not a huge fan of quite yet. I don't know what it is that I'm missing about this band, but I really, really just haven't grasped onto it. I mean, it's good. When I listen to it, it's pretty good. I just haven't been, like, impressed as much as I'd like to be. I don't know. If you guys know what it is that I'm missing from this band, what makes this band so awesome? Just really, really good stuff. I hope, eventually. <laughs> Next, one of my favorite thrash bands of all time, being Anthrax with the Fistful of Metal album. Really, really killer. Kind of, you know, out of the, th the four debuts of the big four, this is a, a hard contender for number one, I think. This is just so, so good. I mean, you open with Death Rider, then it goes into Metal Thrashing Mad, and I think that that might be my favorite song on here but death from above is a really great song just it's killer killer stuff um it's the you know it's speedy it's thrashy and neil turbin's vocals are super super good on here he's no joey belladonna but you know all right the first joey record spreading the disease really really good it actually took me way too long to actually get a copy of this cd because in high school i'd listen to it so much i just never really prioritized it nor did i find it for a price i wanted to pay um but you know it, it's a classic classic must-have american thrash record i mean air i know i knew all these songs lone justice madhouse aftershock armed and dangerous medusa it's just so so good my personal favorite which is among the living really really great record this is absolutely the soundtrack to my high school years partly at least um you'll see some of that other stuff when we get a little bit later on in these series videos this is just so good everything about this this is a 100 percent perfect riff record if you hear some ruckus the cat is playing with a fiddle over in the corner because he's a nuisance uh, but really, really awesome. I don't know if this is the, the fan favorite or not. It might be. Or is that more spreading the disease? Or well, I don't know what the deal is. But I love this record. State of Euphoria. I, I absolutely love this one. This is probably the goofiest they ever got in the original run as far as full lengths go. Uh, it, it's it's great, man. I mean, be all, end all, out of sight, of, out of mind. You're making me laugh. And then Who Cares Wins, Schism. Just so, so amazing. I mean, this is the 80s in a nutshell. Great. And the last really great Anthrax album, which is Persistence of Time. I absolutely adore this album as well. They got so much darker, so much more serious. It was really, really well done, and I appreciate that about them. I mean... Songs like Belly of the Beast are on here. Um, that's probably one of the best known Anthrax songs, I would say. But Keep It in the Family is an amazing, amazing track. Got the Time is so much fun. I know it's a cover. It's really, really great. I own this mostly just because I think it's funny. Uh, this is Attack of the Killer Bees. I, the song Milk on here is just hilarious to me. And then they have an actual version of Bring the Noise. Uh, starting up a posse, you know. They do a Kiss cover of Parasite. Just, it's great, man. I mean, it's goofy and it's 100% stupid, but that's what I like about it, you know? It doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't always have to be just bullet belts and leather pants all the time, you know? And this is a cool little relic, I guess. This is Live the Island Years. Um, I don't really think that this was one consecutive show. 
but it's a really good live disc. I picked this up at a flea market. <sighs> and it came with this weird red jewel case. I don't know what that what the deal with that is, but it's a great, you know, it's a collection of all the stuff you really want from this era of anthrax on a live disc. I mean, they do metal thrashing mad. It would be really cool to have heard them do Death Rider, but whatever. Next, this is a must-have. Fear of Tomorrow by Artillery, one of Denmark's finest as far as uh, anything goes, metal-wise. This is an absolute necessity, something you absolutely have to own if you're a thrash fan, if you have any kind of big collection. Just so, so good. I mean, it's just, it's feral, and it's really speedy. It's an aggressive, aggressive sound without being like, you know, borderline on the death metal side. Great stuff. Next, I love this album. I know some people seem to not dig on this, but this is Ordered to Kill by A War. This is one of, uh, one of the few thrash bands that I listen to from Virginia. And I absolutely love this album. First off, get a load of that album cover. I want a t-shirt of that cover because that is top tier. This is just like good old southern boys playing some motor heady kind of punky angry speedy thrash just such a well put together album and it's so much fun to listen to this is this is top tier we just talked about this guy belladonna so uh this is the first thing that came out after they booted him from anthrax and this is kind of somewhere between traditional metal and thrash metal. But it's still pretty 90s sounding, which is kind of a, not the greatest thing I could think of as far as a, a sound goes for me. But I really do like this album quite a bit. It's a it's a killer, killer record. It doesn't get played as much as, you know, some of the other stuff. But I still think it's fun. <laughs> Alright, Blood Feast. Kill for Pleasure and Face Fate. Another must-have. This is a High Roller Records reissue. Useless slipcase, although it is different. Cause, but this is a way cooler image on the back. You could have just skipped that slipcase, and I would have been content. Really, really top shelf American thrash and must-have in the collection, as far as I am concerned. I mean, it's just you know, come on, vampire, bloodlust, dark side, cannibal, kill for pleasure itself. You gotta own it. And Face Fate's really fun. I mean, Bloodlust is on there too, and so is Vampire, and so is R.I.P. Uh, not the most necessary thing to have on there, but you know, it's a different version of the song, so it's cool to have, especially since it's a basically it's like a dual release, almost bonus tracks tacked on the end. Great stuff. Also a must have, and it's rare I say that about a new album from an old thrash band. It's a Future State of Wicked. You need to have this one, let me tell you, dude. The, the opening track, INRI, is more than enough to just get you to purchase this. I promise you will not be disappointed. I love this disc art. I'm always a big fan of the like raw CD look with an embossed design on the front. Looks really, really cool. And this is just feral, super aggressive, great thrash. Still to this day, these guys are chock full of energy. Um, this one I picked up from a flea market, and it is Cavalier Conspiracy's Blunt Force Trauma. So I got the disc, and it was just a CDR, and uh, yeah. So I printed off the back and front cover just to keep it organized on the shelf, and I really like this album. I'm gonna have to buy a new copy of it because I don't like having it like this, but you know, it opens with a really cool song, Warlord, and then Torture, and Lynch Mob, and then later on, it's got I Speak Hate, Genghis Khan, Burn Waco, and then the title track, and there's a couple other things in there too, but those are like the big ones that I think really, really stand out. It's just really good, chunky meat and potatoes thrash. Another one from them, this is Pandemonium. I haven't listened to this one nearly as much as I have Blood Force Trauma. It's a good record, but it's just not, uh, not you know, my regular listening. Not something I'm always putting on. Interesting color scheme, and I never really noticed that this is like a skeleton on like a tank or, or something. I don't know. I never really looked that hard into it, to be completely honest with you. 
But you know, if Sepultura would have sounded like this after Chaos AD instead of Roots, I think the world would have been a lot more better off. Next, we're gonna get in some heaters here real quick. This is uh, Converted by Decapitation by Crucified Mortals. If you guys aren't familiar with this band, this is Reaper, Craig Horrible from, he used to be part of Hell's Headbangers. He's one of the brothers and now he runs Reaper Metal Productions here on YouTube and the, the label itself. And this is top shelf thrash, dude. This is a perfect riff release. Everything about this is amazing. It's an EP with seven tracks, but it's almost as long as Rain and Blood. So if you guys are like, you know, I don't want to buy an EP to start off, definitely buy this one first, I think. This is my favorite Crucified Mortals material. It's just absolutely great. Absolutely riff -orama. Kind of like uh, somewhere between the Demolition Hammer and the Rigor Mortis style. This is the self-titled. Out of these three, I've probably spent the least amount of time with this one, but uh, I like these paintings of like, you know, the band members getting uh, killed in different ways. It's pretty interesting to look at. Uh, Sounds of the Dead Choir, the newest one from 2017. And this was just something you should not have missed out on if you didn't listen to this. I really like this logo that they have here. Funny enough, I used to draw something very similar to that back in like grade school. I used to draw like a vampire's head on a pike. I don't really know why, uh, but I was like a kid kid, like really maybe oldest middle school, uh, but definitely like grade school. I don't know, I had like an intense fear of vampires when I was a little little boy uh, after watching those Lost Tape shows on Animal Planet, if you guys remember seeing any of that, I don't know. Uh, but this is another must have. This is Darkness Ascends by Dark Angel. <laughs> absolutely top shelf 80s thrash like this is a tier stuff s tier stuff whatever i don't i don't know about any of that tier business <coughs> but this comes with uh two live sets as well being live in philly in 88 and then live at the country club in 89 you know, the song Death is Certain, Life is Not, and The Burning of Sodom, those two are more than enough reason you should be a, an owner of this album. <laughs> Next, Defiance, Void Terra Firma. I haven't spent a lot of time with this, but I bought it thinking, oh, it's going to be like, you know, Bay Area Thrash, and if it, it's very Bay Area Thrash. It kind of sounds like Testament to an extent, not so exciting as Testament, but it's, it's good. This is like a, probably a top 10 thrash metal record of all time for me. This is Weapons of Our Warfare by Deliverance. I absolutely love, love, love this album. It's speedy, it's got all the trimmings of your, you know, your nuclear assaults and your anthraxes when they were like super serious. All put together in a little bit more aggressive with a little bit of a melodic singer a really really well put together it's from 1990 um i don't remember exactly where in the usa these guys are from but it really sounds like that east coast thrash speaking of them earlier tortured existence by demolition hammer i dropped to this cd case trying to film this video the other day and i had some technical issues so i gotta get a new case for it but this is one of my personal favorites as far as the death thrash goes i mean you open up a 44 caliber brain surgery dude Ugh, come on now that's some of the greatest thrash ever then you go right into neanderthal then later on there's oh man hydrophobia mercenary aggression cataclysm the whole album is perfect this is such a great record if you want to put something on you got to get somewhere quick put this on dude you're going to be driving 10 over the speed limit without even knowing it Love this band. Sentence of Death slash Infernal Overkill by Destruction. Absolute must-have classic Teutonic Thrash. Really thin guitar tone, as we all know, but I think it's charming. You know, it fits well with the style. It's really aggressive, really riffy. And Mad Butcher plus Eternal Devastation. You know, the kind of the EP and a full-length release, which I assume Mad Butcher was recorded in the same sessions as Eternal Devastation, just... Uh, as far as I understand, I might be wrong. I, might, I think I'm just pulling that out of my butt. I don't know. 
Either way, it sounds similar, and Mad Butcher is my favorite destruction material, especially the title tracks, probably my favorite destruction song. I just absolutely love it. I really have gotten to like destruction a lot more than I used to. Uh, they used to be like my... I used to like cr probably Sodom the most, then Creator, then Destruction, then Tankard. And um, I think it's st still Sodom number one, but then Destruction, Creator, and then Tankard. I, mean, I don't have any Tankard, so I gotta get some of that stuff. But yeah, Destruction. <laughs> Two discs from a really fun band, Dealing With It by DRI. I don't listen to a ton of crossover, but I really do like this band quite a bit. I mean, songs like Yes Ma'am and Soup Kitchen and Counter Attack. Karma, Nursing Home Blues, Rage of, or Reaganomics, you know, Argument and War. It's so, so good. I mean, it's really punky. It's really aggressive. If you're not a punk guy, shoot the sound anyway. I'm not a really much of a punk guy. You guys know this. And I love this one, Thrash Zone. You gotta own it. This is a sing-along song. This is like something you just want to keep bringing back in the car with you. It's so much, so much fun, dude. Beneath the wheels on here, uh, you say I'm scum, labeled incurable, standing in line, give a hoot is absolutely hilarious. I don't give a hoot, but I still pollute. It's so stupid, but I love it. All right, next, we got some new thrash, and this is the last band. This is going to be a German band called Dustbolt, and this is their album Violent Demolition. Really, really like this one. This is probably my favorite of the Dust Bolt material because Toxic Attack is on here as well as Shattered by Reality. Really, really cool stuff. Old school style thrash, maybe somewhere between the Teutonic style uh, and a little bit of Sepultura. And, you know, maybe just a hint, hint, like a little, like, not even a full teaspoon, just a little pinch of some like obituary ish style death metal in there. Tell me if you guys get that out of that if you've heard it too. This is uh, Awaken the Riot. Really, really cool stuff too. I haven't really gotten into this one quite yet as much as the other ones, but it's a good record. And then I saw this on, or I saw them on this tour cycle. This is the Mass Confusion from 2016. I saw them open for. Who was it? It was Obituary and Exodus and I don't remember who else was on that tour, but it was a really, really good show. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and I got the band to sign the CD, at least two of the guys from the band to sign the CD. And I was really hyped. This got broken in the mosh pit. Um, so I just never fixed it. And it's also, you know, it's on the spine, so I never really cared that much. So I'm going to call it at that, y'all. I'll catch you on the next one. Keep it greasy.